Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle, happy to discuss sediment transport. Okay, so this is a very important component of a river system. A river is flowing water between definable banks, but we could also think of them as conveyor belts of water and sediment that are delicately adjusting both their form and their process to meet the input of how much sediment and how much water is being placed into the system. Sediment are broken down pieces of rocks and rivers are wonderful transportation mechanisms of sediment. So we're going to look at the three types of sediment transport. Sediment transport is the movement, here's the definition, the movement of organic and inorganic particles by water. Generally, the bigger the flow, the higher the sediment transport. Big storms and big floods move tremendous volumes of sediment and are really important for carving our landscape. The collective term for all of the sediments in a river that's being transported is stream load. And the stream load is differentiated into three different components. So let's make a little flow chart here. Sediment transport. This is kind of the overall process. We can break it down into stream load. And then our stream load is going to be bed load, suspended load, and wash load. OK, cool. Let's talk about these. We'll start with, what do I got? Suspended load. So this is particles that are carried along with the water in suspension. So they are floating in the water column. Now, you need to have a certain amount of velocity in order to pick sediments up off the ground, off the bottom of the stream, and transport them. Usually, higher velocity means you can carry bigger particles. When it rains and the river level comes up and the velocity increases, what we often see are rivers that look brown and dirty. Well, if dirt is sediment, they are dirty. Not a bad thing. This is a good thing. It's actually called turbidity, the uh, opaqueness of the water. So the turbidity increases because you have a higher range of suspended sediments. Wildly important for understanding fluvial systems um, are these large storms that carry big volumes of suspended sediments. Well, some particles are too big to be carried in suspension, and so they're carried along the ground. They basically roll along the bottom, and sometimes they'll bounce up and down and bounce up and down, disturbing the bottom of the river channel. This is the importance of a natural flow regime. Because when you don't have a variety of different floods, then all of the suspended sediment actually settles into the pore space. This removes aquatic habitat. In particular, fish don't have the gravels that are necessary for spawning, and you have a decrease in fish habitat. But the river ecology, that's a little bit out of our scope. So bed load is the load of sediment that travels along the bottom of the river. Now, sediment can move from suspended load to bed load back and forth, and this is going to be common when you have varying flows. Higher flows are going to pick up some of the smaller particles and put it into suspension. Lower flows, all of that material is going to drop down onto the bed. And during high flows, when the rivers look dirty, because they're full of sediment, you actually have a conveyor belt of sediment that's moving along the bottom. If you were to be able to listen to it, it would sound like grinding, because so much sediment is actually being transported. Well, 
The last part is going to be the wash load. To understand this, we need to understand a little bit about uh, weathering. So we have two types of weathering, physical weathering, the mechanical breakdown of pieces of rock into smaller pieces, and chemical weathering, the dissolution of rock into ions in solution. Well, those ions that are carrying dissolved components of rocks are transported in rivers. And this is called the wash load or the dissolved load. And this makes sense. Dissolved rocks, where do they go? They don't just disappear. The ions are in solution. The solution that the ions are in are rivers that are being transported and the ions eventually make their way to the oceans, giving the oceans their salty character. This is part of the silicate weathering system that is absolutely crucial for earth surface processes to occur. The breakdown of rocks in the mountains, the transportation of those rocks to the ocean, the recycling of earth materials through specific fluvial processes like sediment transport. Okay, hopefully I zoomed out far enough for you to really gain an appreciation of what's going on here. So rivers transport sediment when it rains. The discharge comes up, increases, there's more stream flow, velocity increases, and it moves sediment. Sediment along the bottom of the river, bed load. Sediment, pieces of sand and other uh, small chunks of rock that are suspended in solution or suspended in the water column, suspended load. And then the dissolved ions that are transported in solution is the dissolved load. So stream load consists of bed load, suspended load, and dissolved load. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.